for this What's Neat this week, we're celebrating April. It's spring, the snow is over, flowers and green. This month, I've discovered I've got a lot of footage of Jeff Meyer coming by and doing various photo shoots. Over the past year, he's done a photo shoot almost every month, different freight cars, totally different di varieties and different dioramas. And he's shooting these photographs for his Rust Bucket website where he likes to post all his magnificently weathered freight cars. So this month I thought it would be really neat to take some of the clips and some of the various times over the two years, put them together. This is going to be a photography month. This month is nothing but photography. You're going to see dioramas. You're going to see this brand new switchyard diorama that Jeff just introduces on video for the very first time. And we shoot with it for the very first time, right when some beautiful Atherin engines just happen to show up for their beauty shots. So we take full advantage of the opportunity and we use this magnificent looking track work to make some great, spectacular looking ad photos. So real, in fact, that on the Atherin web, uh, Facebook uh, website, they actually thought that we photo imposed model locomotives onto real track. That's how good Jeff's work really is. So sit back, relax. This is going to be a really fun 20 minutes of nothing but photography, visual entertainment for what's neat this week, April. What you doing, Jeff? Uh, taking a picture of the trailer I just finished. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. I spend a lot of time on my models and when I do get a chance to photograph them, I want to try to get the most realistic photographs I can get and to me the only way to do that is to take them outside using real sun and that usually gives the most realistic results. I like to try to get different angles though. I come over here to photograph my models because the setup's great, the lighting's usually just right and there's not really any there's no background distractions. You can pretty much limitless sky you got to photograph into. Plus, there's uh, Ken's got a lot of dioramas to use, so anytime I want, I can pull one out and get a different scene, something else to look at for displaying my models. Anytime I get a model finished, it's usually something that I put up for the weathering shop, which is a group of guys that display their models and there's a weekly update on the weathering shop and I try to contribute at least one model maybe every two months or so I try to get one done and I, I have to get decent pictures to present to everybody because it goes out for a lot of people to see and typically we try to get around eight good photographs of just the one particular model 
So it's a lot of pictures you got to take to try to weed out to get to those eight good ones. And I like to get them all on maybe a few different scenes, at least different angles. It may be just two or three dioramas, but. What you got there, Jeff? A new yard diorama that's almost finished, not quite. Really? Got a lot of little details to add. Yep. Nice. So what's this side's loosely supposed to represent uh, 12th Street Yard on the Mopac in St. Louis, Missouri. This side is supposed to represent the Cotton Belt's piggyback ramp in East St. Louis that was basically just a giant gravel parking lot with two tracks on each side of it for loading with a side packer. What kind of track did you use? Micro engineering code 70. These three tracks here were all had the ties respaced a little bit wider for yard track and sides were weathered with multiple rust colors and details west uh, joint bars angle angle bars whatever you want to call them right to the side. I used was micro engineering code 70 track. The ballast is highball products. I believe it's uh, dark gray and everything's been sealed with woodland scenic cement. Prior to that it was painted with latex paint to seal the whole entire thing. Some of the yard, the uh, gravel lot for the piggyback ramp was actually some tile grout mixed in with the highball products ballast. Is this the first the time you've had it out for a photo shoot? Uh, yeah, this is the first time I've had it out. It's not really 100% finished, but it's close enough to at least get some test shots with it and see so how So anybody wants to build a diorama, you suggest something like this for initially getting started and building their models and shooting them outdoors? Yeah, this is a good one to get started. Uh, I just noticed the more I look at freight car pictures, a lot of them are taken in yards, and it's a very believable scene. This is turning out to be kind of a busy day. We've done photo shoots up on the top deck, now we're down below deck because we've still got sun pushing 6 o'clock. UPS man dropped off a few surprises today. These are the new Atherin SDP-45s that they're coming out with. I think by the time you see this, they'll already be out. And they're going to get their beauty shots this week. Something, something sweet for the ads. But they are beauties themselves. These are some very, very nice looking locomotives. I don't know about you, but I think that's kind of what's neat this week. Here's your shot. I need some freight cars right there. And that's your shot. And a lot of reflection on this side to light up that side. So you've been working with this diorama for about an hour and a half now out here. Is there anything uh, that you'd change about its design so far now that you've used it? The only thing I would have maybe done is made the foreground a little bit farther out. Just because on different angles it's nice to have a little bit more of a foreground. How much, have, how much further out do you think you'd go? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe just maybe three or four inches at the most. I haven't added any vegetation yet. I'm going to add some. Uh, is this a change you're going to make before you? proceed um, I, I don't think I will I don't think I'm gonna try to add any more on to the ends maybe I will but I'm definitely gonna add some static grass to the front a little bit and then some of the sulfur tufts here and there maybe even close up to the tracks just I've been studying how big is this what size is this it is three feet by five and a half feet which it fits perfectly in the bed of my pickup truck so excellent that works out for transporting it to various locations. There's a lot of people out there that want to build something for photography and this this looks like it would just fit the bill for a lot of various types of shoots yep. perfectly. It fits. Multiple and, eras, the whole bit. Yep, that's the great thing about being the yard diorama that it'll, it's pretty much any era. I mean, you could probably go 50, uh, 50 years or so and not much would change in a yard, I wouldn't think anyways. To me, what makes a good model is adding the extra detail parts that 
a lot of the cars don't come with. They've gotten better, but, and obviously the weathering, a realistic weathering job, and it doesn't have to be extreme. It can just be something subtle, but as long as it looks real, if it looks right, it looks right. It don't matter if it's extreme or it's subtle. If it's a good weathering job, it's a good weathering job. What do you like to weather with mostly? I typically use oils, oil paints for most of my weathering, but I also use powders. Uh, Pan Pastel is the brand that I really like. It seems to stick better than any of the other ones. And I don't know, that's about it. <laughs> what, what color? What are the main colors of streaks you like, the two? Most? I would say the two main colors for rust that I use is Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna being the reddish one and Burnt Umber being a little bit darker. And you can also use raw umber, works good for some of the really darker stuff. Right there. I'd already do another one. It's your switchyard, Jeff. All these colorful people, man. Look at these people. All these people come down here to see the train today. All these beautiful people. <laughs> this is a good day, Jeff. We got a good one here today, buddy. Just like that. Look at all those people. <laughs> That's nice. That's a neat scene. Now I'm preparing this diorama to do a photo shoot. This is the old Wathers 2002 cover diorama. It was specifically built to shoot the uh, Allegheny uh, locomotive. And today I've rejuvenated it. This, this diorama was cracking, the ballast was getting all messed up, and I've poured some Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement over the top of it just to kind of soak into the uh, walnut shell ballast. This is Woodland Scenics ballast in this case. And what it does is it soaks in and it allows me to um, uh, pour a little bit of fresh ballast over and get rid of all the cracks that were in this scene. Now, I'm going to be shooting this diorama in about two hours and it's not quite ready yet. What I'm doing is I'm drying it with these photo floods in the shop. These floodlights allow the diorama to warm up more evenly than what a blow dryer would allow it to have happen. And I'm measuring the temperature here with a laser thermometer. And as you can see, I'm about 100 and yeah, about 120, 100 and so degrees, which is a nice even temperature. It gets down deep underneath the track and allows the Elmer's glue and the Woodland Scenics glue to set up. So. And here's the angle of the shot I'm working on. A few mountain peaks in the background and a few pine trees. Pull back, you'll see the setup here. This looks like a great way to end a photo shoot, huh? Productive day too, very.